Hi everyone and welcome to my channel Be Yourself. This is Dr. Ajni Sharma and today I am going to deal with the Heidi Weinberg equilibrium from the population genetics. I have chosen this topic because I have released explanation for the CSIR net GRF and uh, last uh, few weeks before. So uh, on that I got many of the comments from the students that they need explanation from the past year questions of the past year questions but I think instead of uh, going to the each and every questions why don't I pick up the uh, the topics from that question papers and deal with deal that all very clearly so that uh, the students can uh, themselves attempt the questions and uh, because if you will see the past year questions the patterns of the questions are repeating. The questions uh, sometimes get also repeated, only the data get changed. Because in this time also, I have seen that there were in total 10 marks questions from the Hattie Weinberg equilibrium. So I have picked this topic this time. And uh, in my coming videos, I will discuss one by one all the topics so that within the six month, you can have all the commands, have the commands over all the topics, expected topics for the upcoming examination of your CSIR net and also for other get and dbt and others too so let's start as i am dealing with the population genetics so we must know about the population what actually population uh, is or how we define the population population is a group of species of the similar species which can interpret but if I am saying the interbreed, then all the population doesn't undergo interbreed. Only few of the populations undergo uh, interbreeding, and this is known as effective population size represented by any because it determines the population gene pool. What the gene pool is? Gene pool is the set of all genes in an interbreeding population. So the population which will interbreed. Uh, the, uh, that can only pass the gene from one generation to other. So this is known as effective population size. So effective population size is uh, influenced by some of the factors like breeding sex ratio. We know that there are the male and female sex ratios. So the, there can be chances that one of the sex ratio or the one either female or male can dominate in a population. So the one uh, the which is rarer in number, the sex ratio which is rarer in number is most likely to mate and reproduce. And so the rarer sex is dominant in the gene pool. Next factor is the population size. If suppose a particular group of species is uh, very less in number, then it will be dominated by the gene pool. Next is the breeding groups. Uh, in similar to that of breeding sex ratio which is uh, which means the one which is rarer in number well dominant in the gene pool because they have the more chances to pass their almost all the genes to, uh, to uh, in the next generations okay so the uh, in the breeding groups which uh, which have uh, uh, higher uh, fertility period and uh, uh, which is not be influenced by the migration from their groups from uh, either from immigration or uh, there will be no any movement of the species from one group to another then that group will dominate in the gene pool next is the fertility if i am talking about the uh, fertility it means the one which is more fertility will uh, have the ability which have the fertility will have the ability to pass the gene from one pop, uh, one generation to other generations. But if we will talk for the fertility, then all the individuals have different uh, level of the fertility period, and also they can. Uh, uh, if we also talk about the size of their size too, then there is always competition for the fert fertilization. So the one which will dominate will have be able to pass its gene from one generation to another. But uh, high deep penward equilibrium doesn't depend on all these things. If this any of this condition will prevail, then uh, high deep penward equilibrium will not come into existence. So all these factors should not be there while uh, studying for the high deep penward equilibrium. Rather, if this all these factors will not be there, then what we, we can say then the effective population size, which is represented by an E, will be is equals to the actual population size or n. And now after that, or we can say when the population is in equilibrium, then we will follow the Hadi-Weinberg equilibrium. 
according to this uh, had you been what equilibrium should uh, have the random mating it means any individual can mate with the any of the individual uh, so uh, which means uh, all are fertile all will have the same fertility next is, uh, is that there should not be any mutation if there will be mutation then the allele which should pass from one generation to another will be changed or the gene which should have passed from one generation to another will be changed so there should be not any mutation likewise there should not be migration because a population has a definite gene pool and have a gene so if there will be migration then there will be the chances of uh, the change in their gen uh, their gene uh, gene or there may be the chances of recombination with the other species so the, it will influence the hardy member equilibrium if there will be natural selection too then there will be the last and uh, destroy of uh, the gene uh, from the one generation to another generation so it should also not be there next is that both and male and female should have the same allele frequencies it should not be sex determined La if the population will be large in size then uh, th there will be the less chances for the change in their uh, allele frequency by chance so if all this condition is there then we will follow the hardy weinberg equilibrium according to this at equilibrium value are expressed as simple function of gene frequency where the frequency for the dominant allele a is represented by small p and the frequency for the recessive allele small a is represented by q or if it is in equilibrium then the p as well as q or we can say dominant allele as well, well as recessive allele should pass from one generation to another so the p plus q should be 100% or it can be equal to 1 now when we cross uh, will have the cross between the dominant allele and a small allele what we will get we will get a, a homozygous dominant one two heterozygous and one homozygous recessive one so if we are representing uh, a with p so the homozygous recessive one will be represented as p square heterozygous as pq and recessive homozygous as q square so for the two allele p square plus 2 pq plus p square is equals to 1 or it can also be expressed as p plus q whole square is equals to 1 similarly if it here we have only two allele but what we have three allele in that case we will express the three allele as p q r we will take these are the three different alleles three different alleles and the square of expanding this square as p square plus q square plus q uh, r square plus k square plus 2 pq plus 2 pr and plus 2 qr now what is the condition when the species is employed in nature in that case there is a formula is that p plus q uh, whole c here c represent the ploidy nature for example in the case of tetraploidy c is equals to 4 in that case p plus q whole to the power 4 will be equals to p to the power 4 q power 4 4 p q uh, q plus 6 p square k square plus 4 p q whole power 3 so uh, now question is here what the, is how the, we will calculate the frequency p and q so there is a formula for example if you want to calculate the frequency for uh, a allele then it will be equal to the number of a allele by the total number of the alleles now how we calculate the number of a alleles in the case of homozygous suppose there are 100 number of uh, a a alleles i am writing it here uh, a a allele in total there are 100 in number in a and a small a is uh, suppose there it is uh, 25 in number and small a small a is 10 in number so what is the total number 5 3 135 out of 135 a a is 100 or the allele a is 100 uh, heterozygous uh, a is 25 and homozygous recessive is 10 
Now how then we will calculate the frequency for A. Then 2 into number of A A homozygous. As there are the 2 A or the home in the homozygous state there are 2 alleles. So we are multiplying it here with the 2. So it will be equal to 2 into 100 plus number of a b here uh, we have only uh, one a I, here b is representing the uh, recessive one so as here it is only one a so uh, there is no need for the multiplication of two we will we will just take the 25 and divided by 2 into total number of individuals or uh, the sum of the all the alleles frequency of all the alleles okay so 2 into 135 so whatever the result will be it will be the frequency for allele a or we can say it will be equals to the p and to calculate the q what we will do we know that p plus q is equals to 1 so for the calculation of p q we will subtract it by 1 so this will be the frequency of the recessive one and what when we are asked for the heterozygous one then then we will just multiply it by 2 into p into q so this will give the frequency for this heterozygous allele okay now i hope you have understood all the things i am ending up with this questions it is taken from the csir net june 2016 uh, you first try it by your own because I have explained all the things and I am giving you hint, hints here is that it is a tetraploid genotype. Hope you have understood this and now you will able to solve it out completely. But if you are unable to solve, don't worry. I will explain in this in my upcoming video. So don't forget to subscribe my channel and share so that all can benefit it. And if you have some questions from the population genetics which you are unable to so all this please comment me in my comment box i am better i am giving you my email id this is r a j a n i rajni dot bharatiya b h a r a t i y a bharatiya at the rate gmail dot com you can simply click the pick from the question papers and send to my gmail so that i can i will solve and i will describe you through the youtube so don't forget to subscribe and share my channel and don't forget to even send the questions or any other doubt to me if i will able to solve it i will i will i will take very my pleasure to solve that if i will not i will i will request you to excuse me for that okay so goodbye and have a nice day